Hey guys, let's take a look at ratio. Oh, look at that bad language on my computer screen. How embarrassing. Okay. Well, I don't, we don't use that kind of language around my household. So ratio uh, puzzles, ratio puzzles. Okay. All righty. We could write something that's really pleasant instead of the word problems. Puzzles is pretty good. You know what? I don't, I'm trying to think. Nah. Bag of frosting. It's too long to say. Anyway, we'll just use puzzles. Okay, let's talk about two things. A ratio, and we'll talk about what cross-multiplying means. A ratio is just a fraction, right? If there were three you know, guys and eight girls, uh, if there were 30 guys, then how many girls would there be? You, you could just go, oh, I know that. You multiply three by 10 to get 30, multiply eight by 10, that's gonna be 80. All right. It's the same kind of jazz you do when you go, oh, 15 kids ate 76 cupcakes. Then if you had 300 kids, how many cupcakes would that eat? You can just do that. Okay. The neat thing about ratios that are equal to each other, and these are equal, if you cross multiply, which means you take the uh, numerator of one and multiply it by the denominator of the other one, and then you do the same thing to the other two, they, they turn out to be equal to each other. In other words, if you took three and you multiplied by 80, well, three times eight is 24. So three times 80 is 240, right? So eight now times 30, well again, eight times three is 24, and then add the zero, there it is, they're the same. So you, you've seen this before, uh, for example, let's say, oh, I don't know, let's go five tenths as a fraction, that's equal to one half, right? All right, but if you multiply, cross multiply here, 10 times one is 10, well, five times two is also 10. Well, at some, at some point, somebody went, wait a minute, we can use this to our advantage, we can just, we can mess with any numbers now. We can, if we have three numbers, we can find out the fourth one by cross multiplying and making an equation out of it, which is what they did, okay? However long ago that was. All right, let's talk about, uh, well, there's another example. Three fourths is equal to 15 over 20, right? And if you did the uh, cross multiplication, four times 15, well, two times 15 is 30, right? So four times 15 would be 30 twice, which is 60. And then three times 20, well, three times two is six, so three times 20 is 60. That proves that cross multiplying actually does work, all right? Now let's look at this. This is exactly the same thing as we just did, right? The only thing different, there's an X in there. So we don't fly off the handle or start crying uncontrollably or wet our pants or the pants of others. We just simply treat it exactly like we just did a second ago. We, we just did this, right? Three times 20, we said, is the same thing as four times 15, right? Well, it's the same thing here too. You can do the exact same thing. You can say eight times X or eight X is equal to five times 32. Well, what is five times 32? Let's see, five times 30, let's break up 32 into two parts. Five times 30 is 150. Five times two is 10. So 150 plus 10, 160, right? And you know how to do this. You just divide by eight, right? Divide by eight, divide by eight, done. 16 divided by eight is two. And there's a zero left over, and there's your answer. We got it. That's all we're doing in this lesson. Cross multiplying our ratios, all right? If you give you, uh, go ahead and copy that down. And it's the same thing. You're not gonna get perfect answers every single time, like an integers. Oh, the answer is five or 12 or eight. It'll be anything. It doesn't matter if it's a fraction, who cares? The basic setup though, is anytime you have two ratios that are equal to each other, you cross multiply, you got it. So let's do the, let's always, if we can't do the letter, the variable first, so it kind of ends up on the left side. So 21 times M, you will not be surprised to learn, is 21 M. All right, and that's gonna be equal to four times five, which is 20. Okay, well, there's only one step left. I mean, if you saw this in your math book, you'd go, that's easy. Let's divide by 21. Divide by 21, so m is equal to 20 over 21. Okay, you can leave it there. You don't have to do a fraction. Oh, look, I guess if you wanted to do 0 0.952380 repeating, that'd be fine too, but you don't have to do that. Okay, let's do another one. Here's, oh, oh, this is a practical one. Okay, in the wedding cake recipe, the ratio of bacon slices to raisins was eight to three. Wow, I love wedding cakes. If there were 120 bacon slices, how many raisins were there? Hmm, that's gonna be a happy bride. Okay, bacon and raisins. So we could, we could just say, 
the ratio of bacon slices to raisins. If you want to write something like this, B to R is 8 to 3. All right, there we go. And to solve this, we know we're going to have to get something that looks like that, right? We need two fractions that equal each other. Well, let's, let's do it. If there were 120 bacon slices, how many raisins were there? Well, we've already got 8 to 3 is our ratio, right? So we're just going to go like this, equals, stick a fraction, and fill in one of the blanks, and we'll cross multiply to find out what the fourth one is. Okay, 120 bacon slices, so that matches with the top, right? Because that's bacon, so that goes right there. 120, how many raisins? Well, you know it's going to be R, or X, or whatever you want to put. Okay, well, we cross multiply, right? So 8 times R is 8 R. And then that's going to be, I'll just like that so you can visualize it, 3 times 120, piece of cake, 3 times 12 is 36 with a 0. And the last thing we do is just divide by 8, so divide by 8, divide by 8. Okay, let's see, 36 divided by 8 is 4, and 32, there's 4 left over, drop the 0, 40 divided by 8 is 5. There we go, 45 raisins, delicious wedding cake. It's going to be a happy groom when he gets that stuffed into his mouth. Okay. Wait, did they tie tin cans to the cake? It seems like there's something like that. No. They put the tin cans in their freezer for a year and take a... After... Never mind. I... Okay. There you go. All right. In the same wedding cake, let's fig figure out another one here, uh, recipe, the ratio of peanuts to tomatoes was 11 to 7. Oh, this is good stuff here. If there were 56 tomatoes... How many peanuts were there? Well, we can just do this if you want to. Peanuts to tomatoes, that's going to be 11 to 7, right? Okay. Now, we know we're going to do this kind of a you know, doohickey thing, so there we go. If there were 56 tomatoes, so let's see, that goes in the bottom this time, right? Match with tomatoes. How many peanuts were there? Well, we don't know. We'll just call it P. And then we'll go ahead and do our cost multiplying, right? 7 times P, 7P. 11 times 56 is, if you do the arithmetic, that'll be 616. All right. Okay, we just divide by 7. That's all we need to do. And then P is equal to 88. By the way, another quick trick. If you see that 7 is, is you know, your first uh, ratio and you end up with 56, you know you're going to be multiplying by 8, right? Eight, 7 times 8 is 56, so you can go like this and go, okay, well, since that's multiplied by 8, I have 11 times 8. That's going to be P. 11 times 8 is 88, so there we go. Think about how delicious that wedding cake is going to be. Bacon, raisins, peanuts, tomatoes. I mean, that's just, the only thing missing is maybe a couple of slices of onion or something like that. Kind of give it a little, give it a kick. So, okay. All right. Give, give A a try, and uh, think about those crispy crunch crunchy onions in that cake as you do this. All right, pause it and try it, hey. All right, the ratio of neophytes to masters was seven to two. A neophyte is a newbie, they call it, I guess, these days. So let's go newbie to the masters. And that ratio is, what, seven to two? Seven to two. Okay, if there were 714 neophytes in, that's gonna be the top, so I got 714. How many masters? Well, there's my M. All right, let's do our cross multiplication. By the way, um, you know, anytime you're able to do a quick arithmetic and look across and go, what do I multiply this by to get this? You can do the same thing to the bottom. If you saw this, you could say seven times what is 714? You could go, wait, seven times what is 700? 100. And then 14 divided by 102, oh, 102 times two is 204. But anyway, we'll just do the equation. 7 times m is equal to 714 times 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14. 14 times 2 is 28. And there we go. And divide by 7. Done. m is equal to, okay, 14 divided by 7 is 2. 28 divided by 7 is 4. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Okay, all right. Pause it and try b. Okay, let's take a look at b here. Uh, our ratio will be C over S, we'll call it, is equal to 5 over 9. Okay, we're going to go put an equal sign, and we're going to have S, and this one will be 18,000 serves. 
Okay, and then, okay, so this will be C here. That's our setup. So, and again, you can do the trick if you want to. It won't always work, and if you don't see it, then just cross multiply. But you can always go cross multiply 9C equals 5 times 18,000. Good gravy. It's going to be 90,000. Sometimes doing this trick I'm going to show you will help you to not have to do that. But 9 times what is 18? 2, right? 9 times what then is 18,000? 2,000. So 5 times 2,000 would be 10,000. So that is your answer. There we go. Okay. All right. You guys have a great rest of the day. Talk to you guys next time. We'll see you.